We're gonna have so much fun with this one. This video is about how sugar affects a cell. But to make it interesting, we've created kind of a story out of it. We started uh, the story from a cell when he started as a little stem cell and as he grew up and became a, an adult cell. But we're gonna talk about how sugar influences a cell and how it actually changes the cell. So you know what's going on inside your body from sort of a different visual perspective. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the story of Sammy, the stromal stem cell. But first, make sure you do hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon. That way you turn on notifications, you know whenever I post a new video or go live. And then after this video, uh, please go ahead and check out Thrive Market down below in the description. That way you can get your hands on good snacks that I approve of, keto, fasting, you name it. All kinds of stuff that's gonna be groceries delivered to your doorstep so you don't have to go to the grocery store. So check them out down in the description. But first, watch this video so you know what's going on inside your body. All right, so here's Sammy. Okay, Sammy is a multipotent stromal stem cell. What that means is he's just a young stem cell with so much potential. Sammy could become anything he wants to in this world of the human body. Okay, he could become an osteoblast, which is a cell that forms strong bones and just be the hero of the body. He could become a chondrocyte, which is going to be something that builds cartilage and joints. It has so much potential. But what ended up happening is Sammy ended up hanging out with the wrong crowd, and he started consuming a bunch of glucose or sugar. Now, the negative thing is that glucose has a negative impact on stromal stem cells. Okay, glucose affects stem cells to actually become something different. Believe it or not, Sammy, because he started consuming so much glucose and hanging out with the wrong crowd, he changed his life path from becoming an osteoblast or a chondrocyte to actually becoming an adipocyte, a fat cell. You see, this actually makes sense from an evolutionary standpoint. If you take a young cell and you expose it to a bunch of glucose, the body's gonna say, hey, food is plentiful, we're good. We can go ahead and store this. Now let's take a look at some research just so you understand how Sammy's working here. So there's a study that was published in the journal Stem Cell and Development that took a look at stromal stem cells and they treated them with increasing amounts of glucose. Okay, now when they did this, they found that the more glucose they treated a stromal stem cell with, the higher the likelihood of that stem cell changing paths and becoming a fat cell. So that means that we can dictate how a cell lives the rest of its life. We can literally turn a stem cell to become a fat cell. So now let's take a look at Sammy's life as he goes through adolescence and becomes an adult. So Sammy is no longer Sammy. He's now Sam, and he's a full-blown adipocyte. He's a full-blown fat cell, okay? Now, he's still consuming glucose. That's the downside. He's still, he's still taking in a bunch of sugar. Thing is, now he's neglecting his life, okay? He's not paying his bills. He's not paying attention to his family. He's irresponsible. He's not showing up to work, and it's causing a lot of problems, okay? It's making it so that he's affecting those around him quite a bit, too. Now, the biological equivalent of this is, as a fat cell grows, and as a fat cell becomes more use to glucose, it becomes insulin resistant, okay? Now, it even activates specific pathways known as the J and K pathway. Now, we'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute, but basically what's going on is he's numb. Sam has been using glucose for so long that now he's just numb to his environment. So even when people are trying to send him signals and other cells are trying to send him signals to get him to do things, it's like it just bounces off of him. Now, the biological equivalent of this is simply, again, it's that J and K pathway. That J and K pathway triggers what's called the phosphorylation of, funny enough, the IRS, the insulin receptor substrate. So what this essentially is meaning is that because the cell is so insulin resistant, it's actually cutting it off at the source before insulin even has a chance to affect the cell. So basically, he's become so insulin resistant that glucose is just flowing around and now affecting other cells. Point is, is that his bad habits are affecting others. But it continues to get worse. As Sam continues to use glucose, it's really affecting those around him. Because Sam is now not just innocently just held up consuming a bunch of glucose, he is now affecting those around him. He's inflamed, he's irritable, he's mad, and he's just taking it out on everybody else. This is not a good thing. Now, the biological equivalent here is inflammation. 
He's inflamed, okay? And he's literally getting upset to the point where it's leaking out inflammation and affecting other cells. It's just like if you have someone that is really just wrecking their life to the point where they're actually ruining those around them as well. It's not a good thing. Now what this really means or equates to from a biological standpoint is that as a fat cell becomes older and larger and more insulin resistant, it starts triggering nuclear factor kappa B, which triggers the production of what's called tumor necrosis factor one alpha and interleukin-6. These are cytokines that trigger inflammation throughout the rest of the body. Now, in case you didn't know, inflammation is very bad. Inflammation is basically like our body's constantly having to fight the flu or sickness. It's what makes us fatigued. It is the root of so many chronic diseases. It is bad, bad stuff. There was even a study that was published in the journal Endocrinology Metabolism that took a look at fat cells as related to BMI and as related to insulin resistance and found that the more insulin resistant a fat cell, the more it released inflammatory cytokines. So start doing the math here. You have a fat cell that's releasing a bunch of inflammatory cytokines. It's triggering inflammation elsewhere. The, the insulin resistance of that cell is making it so that glucose is high throughout the entire body, affecting other stromal stem cells. So let's put this into sort of the analogy again. So because Sammy or Sam is so insulin resistant and so resistant to change, it's making it so that there's just all kinds of toxic material around him, affecting the other cells, making it so that there's more glucose available for other cells. His bad habits are now carrying over to other people or other cells, right? Meaning now they are being recruited as fat cells and thus starts the vicious cycle. More adipocytes, more fat cells, more insulin resistance, more inflammatory cytokines, and more disease. It starts with what you're putting in your body. You can be the change to the world and to the body and to how you feel for the rest of your life. Don't be a Sam. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you in the next video.